So uh, since I've had this uh, sleeping platform in the back of my Jeep, uh, I've had a bunch of people asking me about it uh, on Reddit and uh, friends and a few people on uh, Instagram have been asking about um, how I put this together and uh, some of its features. So I thought today I'd kind of give a bit of a walkthrough of uh, what its features are and how I use it and uh, what are the good things about it and, uh, and some of the bad things about it as well. So uh, to start out with, uh, it's basically just built out of plywood with some outdoor carpet over the top of it to uh, finish off the surface. It's in two pieces and the idea behind that is, you can see the join there, the idea behind that is that uh, you can take that front section out and then fold the, the back seats up so that you can have enough room for four people in the vehicle. But also utilize this piece of the sleeping platform which has the, uh, the pull-out uh, table and, uh, and other storage in there. So it just makes it a little bit more versatile than having it as one piece. Um, also one of the challenges uh, with trying to fit something like this into a Cherokee which is not that big of a vehicle uh, there's there's a couple of issues. Um, one is the the wheel wells um, kind of dictate the height. So if you look back in there, you can see the wheel wells there, um, and uh, it kind of dictates the height of um, of this platform uh, and and some other clearance issues. So um, it doesn't give a whole lot of uh, a lot of uh, headroom once you're uh, once you're in there to sleep, but um, really, I don't use it for anything else other than storing my gear and then uh, and then sleeping. So um, it's not too terribly bad. If I was going to try and live in this thing, this obviously would not work. But uh, but just for for somewhere to sleep uh, when you're on the road or you know a couple of nights out uh, on the trails, um, it's it's perfectly fine. So uh, in addition to that. Um, issue with the height you've also got the issue with the length so you'll see at the end there there is a couple of pieces that are folded back and they have some legs on them and what those do is they extend out and allow you to extend the length of it temporarily uh, while you have the seats in the front push forward so uh, I'll uh, show you how that works real quick see so here I'm just going to uh, fold down the uh, the driver's side uh, it's the side that I typically use. Um, I really only this is uh, this is primarily best for one person. Uh, two people can sleep in here. It is wide enough, and and I do have the other side uh, that can fold down as well. Basically, uh, when I want to um, stop for the night and sleep, uh, I push the front seat all the way forward, and then put the backrest uh, all the way in its forward position as well. And then I have these hinges here. Uh, they actually lock into place. So you push in a little tab. And those hinges then fold out. Uh, you can't fold them out completely ahead of time because it kind of catches uh, in a couple of places. So basically, what I do is I, I uh, un unlatch them, then uh, oops, latch back up again, uh, unlatch them, fold it forward, and then fold the leg down. And then the leg just supports that so that when you've got your head here, uh, you know, it's it's kind of supported and I just have a piece of piano hinge here that's what I've used to to uh, to put the hinge on there so this is just temporarily uh, folded down when you're sleeping so what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll put my uh, camping mattress in here so that you can see what it looks like when there's a when there's a mattress in okay so I just use a an inflatable camping mattress it's the one I use when I go backpacking as well so um, the nice thing about that is I don't have to carry two different mattresses for, for different purposes. Uh, so you can see here it's I'm five foot uh, about five foot nine nine and a half. Um, the mattress does stick a little bit out of the over the end still as you can see there. Uh, so if you're much taller than probably 510 this is probably not going to be a vehicle that will work for you for sleeping unless you wanted to sleep diagonally which then really cuts down on the usable space that you have uh, in the back of the Jeep so um, so that's basically uh, the, the space the sleeping mattress takes up there 
and I just lay the pillow in. And there you go. So that's all set up for uh, for sleeping for the night. Um, and as you can see, we still have this side here completely open. So this is where I'll store. Um, in fact, right at the front of this section uh, is where I put my uh, 12 volt refrigerator. And then behind that, I will put things like uh, my tent and uh, any, any other gear that um, that I want to take with me. Um, I also maybe have a, a, a small bag or something like that for clothes and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so that's how it works out uh, in a sleeping arrangement. I've spent a number of nights in here and it's really comfortable. Um, I have uh, no complaints about it whatsoever. It's, uh, it's really pretty awesome. So in the back here, uh, I have two compartments, uh, one of which uh, I have my toolbox, and I'll just pull that out real quick. And then behind here I have some plastic tubs which I have labeled, there's another one behind that. Um, I kind of keep all my uh, all the stuff that I use for, for cooking and those kind of things in there. Um, and I've got them labeled so they're easy, easy to identify, I don't have to spend huge amounts of time pulling uh, various different plastic tubs out from places to try and find where stuff is stored. Uh, this is a recent addition and it's uh, this used to just be a big open section uh, like that one there and um, what I found was I really wanted somewhere where I could uh, cook especially if you're doing any kind of overlanding or anything like that. Um, you could have a, a portable fold-out table or something like that but um, I found that this was kind of a nice way to have a um, a versatile table that can be used for a bunch of things and it's just right there in the Jeep and it and it takes no time to fold out so um, I'll pull this out okay and uh, here I, I actually have um, I was a little concerned that um, the table wouldn't uh, wouldn't be sturdy enough uh, as it's pulled out to its full extension so uh, what I've done here is uh, I built a little a little hinge mechanism and this is actually an old tripod leg and uh, the really cool thing about using a tripod leg is that uh, it's height adjustable so when you're parked up somewhere you never really know what the terrain is going to be like you know you try and pick a flat spot as uh, as much as possible but uh, sometimes you'll you'll be in a section where you know there might be a little slope one way or the other and uh, having this height adjustable leg um, is really handy because um, you just extend it down like so and uh, it will support that uh, that end of the table. I am considering, it's not all the way to the ground right now, but um, I am considering uh, maybe adding a second one um, just to kind of get rid of the, the little sideways movement that it sometimes has, uh, but uh, it's not a huge deal. Um, the one thing uh, here that, or a couple of things that I want to change about this is I need to put some kind of uh, fastener underneath uh, that uh, second pull-out section to hold the leg up in place. Um, right now it just, I kind of just have to fold it up when I'm folding it in. Um, you can see here it's, uh, there, there's nothing in there to hold it up. So um, it can kind of be a bit of a pain when you're trying to put it away if, if you forget to fold it down or uh, if, if you forget to hold it up and all of a sudden it's jammed in it against something uh, in the back there and uh, it won't fully close. So probably a little bit of uh, elastic or something like that under there that'll um, just hold it in place uh, while it's not in use uh, would be handy. And then uh, the other thing I need to do is when it's... Let's just fold this back up again. Um... What I also need to do is um, find some way to uh, to put some kind of latch mechanism on here uh, for a couple of reasons. One is to uh, to stop the the table rolling out 
um, when it's when it's away. Although I do have a net, um, I have a net that runs from one side of the jeep to the other, which kind of stops anything. Uh, the boxes that are in there, that kind of stuff, it stops all that from sliding out. But um, the main reason why I would like to put some latches on is I've noticed when I have been on some uh, some sloped ground, um, what happens is this table can have a tendency to start to to uh, walk its way back into uh, the compartment. Uh, so really what I need is just something here that'll, um, somewhere in here, I haven't quite figured it out yet, that'll, uh, that'll stop this from, uh, stop the, the, uh, the slide from uh, sliding back into itself. I didn't get one that uh, would lock in place, which um, I'm sure they make them, but uh, when I was putting this together, I was in a bit of a hurry, and I just used uh, standard uh, kitchen slides that you get from Home Depot. Uh, this was very easy to make. Um, it's a uh, couple of pieces of one by two and some uh, some plywood and uh, two sets of uh, kitchen uh, drawer slides. I think they're uh, 24 inches long, so it was very easy. And then just one, it's kind of like Russian dolls. One just fits inside the other. Um, so when this is uh, folded out, I have uh, I have enough room to to uh, put my my gas stove on that one, and then I have uh, an area where I can do um, you know work uh, pre preparation, you know, cutting uh, vegetables, that kind of stuff. Um, I have just added a uh, a mountain bike uh, carrier to the back of this. Um, it will fold down. Uh, it's a problem that I still have to solve, though. When it folds down, the um, what happens is the uh, the actual carrier part of the um, of the device kind of gets in the way of here this a little bit. Uh, so I've got to I've got to solve that problem right now. I've I just unbolted it and uh, and took it right off when I want to use it, uh, which is okay. But um, it does make uh, it does kind of uh, make the whole uh, process a little bit longer to to actually get the the table out and and start using it, which is uh, kind of the whole reason for having it uh, attached into the jeep in the first place. So that's a problem for solving it at some later point. I think I, I've got a couple of ideas, but um, it is something I need to to address. Um, so what else uh, can I tell you about it? Uh, one of the downsides is it's quite heavy. Um, the front section's not too bad, but this back section, because of the table and there's extra uh, there's extra wood in this in this back section, um, it's a little uh, larger in its depth, uh, so it's it's heavier and it can be a little awkward um, to get in and out. So that's one drawback of it. Um, and to be quite honest, uh, once it's in, like at the moment. Um, this just stays in my Jeep all the time. There's just me and I don't really have a need to take it out. So uh, it pretty much stays in there uh, full time. Um, so it's not too much of a hassle, but uh, I might try and uh, find a way to, to make it a little lighter if I was ever to build this again. Um, but apart from that, it's, uh, it's not too bad. Um, one of the other things uh, that was a bit of a struggle, uh, two things actually, um, was to try and to get the height of the two of uh, the two pieces uh, to be the same. Um, obviously, the back of this Jeep, it's what a 26, 27 year old Jeep. Um, it's not exactly flat in the back there. There's various parts of the um, the cargo space that has uh, has kind of gotten a little uh, a little warped and out of shape. And also, it's there's carpet there too. So um, it. Uh, you know, the, the carpet will sink over time as well. So probably what I'm going to do is um, get some uh, some plywood that will actually act as a subfloor, if you like. Um, I have height adjustable um, feet in here as well, though. Uh, so that's actually been pretty good of, at, at getting it leveled up, but um, it does need to um, does need to be adjusted a little bit more. And the other problem that I had was the fact that um, as you're driving down the road, particularly when you're on a rough road. Um, the two pieces tended to uh, to move and separate from one another. Um, you know, one would walk towards the front seat, and the other would kind of uh, walk towards the back. And uh, the one coming to the back would be 
uh, was a particular problem because it would make it uh, difficult sometimes to open the the, uh, the tailgate on the Jeep. Um, this has this Jeep has the uh, the age-old problem of um, the uh, the latch mechanism not working properly, and unfortunately, I can't fix this one because someone decided to um, to weld a piece into the back of it and so I can't do the normal adjustment that you would do on that uh, I'd have to buy a whole new um, latch mechanism so that's not something that I want to do right at the moment um, so let's just walk around the side here so you can see there's also storage underneath here uh, so again there's this area is big enough to put uh, the same plastic tubs that I use for the back I also store my um, my air compressor under here and just you know kind of uh, a few things that um, that I don't need all the time uh, they can slide into the back there but it's really handy to have that storage underneath here as well um, and uh, I got the same same setup on the other side um, so you can see there's one of those plastic tubs in there uh, so the the issue that I had with the um, this is, might be a little bit difficult to see because it could be kind of dark under here. Uh, so the way I solved the problem of um, the two pieces coming separated was to put some uh, latches. Um, they're adjustable, so I can wind I can wind this piece in and out um, to uh, to adjust the tension that's on on those latches, and uh, basically it just uh, folds up and clips in and so that keeps the two of them together and, and stops the, the separation um, and it, the separation's not a huge deal but except when you're uh, when you're trying to uh, to sleep if they've come apart um, you know stuff can get down in between the, the holes and I don't want my sleeping mattress to get pinched and that kind of stuff so um, it is good to to try and keep them together as much as possible so you can see I've got some plywood here. It was just a test to see whether that plywood would work out. And it just it does give a, a much more solid base for um for uh, this uh this section in particular because it um this is resting on the on the uh the uh back of the back seat and it's not completely solid there so having this there uh kind of gives that a, a little bit of extra strength. But uh it also has the height adjustable uh, leg on there as well, so if they if they are out of whack a little bit, um, I can uh, fix it. So that's pretty much it. That is my sleeping platform. Um, I hope that's uh, given you some ideas for doing something similar in in your Jeep uh, or or another vehicle for that matter. Um, I actually have the the plans um, for what I built. Uh, they're mostly accurate. Uh, there were a few kind of modifications that I did along the way when I was building this. Um, maybe I had uh, not thought of something when I originally made the, the 3D model of this, but um, I, if you're interested I can also um, post links for, uh, for where you can get that. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have on this as well. So. I think that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, I hope it's been useful to you. Thanks. Bye.